A young boy is just short of a monster. He is adopted by a loving man and his wacky wife. The laughs keep coming as the boy pushes them to the limits. This is Ryan. And this is Ashley. And this is Ruining Ruining Our Childhood, Childhood. a weekly podcast where we remove our childhood goggles and put on our adult bifocals to rewatch and review our favorite movies from the past. Yeah. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. Ah, we said it at the same time. Jinx, now we can't talk. You owe me a Coke. Oh. So that's going to make it for an awkward podcast. (laughs) Yes. Just listen to us breathe. It's just a podcast where two people sit here and breathe. In sync with one another. And stare deeply into each other's eyes. This just got real. Yeah. Creepy. Very creepy. So, hi guys. It's Ashley. Ryan. And we're just talking about movies and stuff. And it's a movie that you guys picked. Yes. Via our poll. I did not think this was going to win. Me neither. But Instagram pulled it out again. Yeah. And if you're somebody that just voted in our Facebook or Twitter poll... Well, that's what you get. You should be voting in all of the polls. Because you're probably going, I saw on Facebook, National Treasure destroyed Problem Child. Why are they doing Problem Child? I don't know if it destroyed it. Towards the beginning of the poll, it was definitely leading very far. Mm -hmm. That's not a word. No. Those aren't words that should go together. It was... By a large margin. Yeah, it was pulling ahead quite a bit, but then it kind of evened out more. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it was at like 58%. Yeah. And Instagram was very similar. Not Instagram. Twitter was very similar. But Instagram, a lot more people wanted Problem Child. So So that's what we're doing. Yep. And we're th- we had thrown around the idea of in a couple weeks doing a loser poll. Yeah, maybe the absolute... Uh, maybe the episode after our one year anniversary. Just two, slash, two weeks from now. Yeah, slash 50th episode. Yeah. I can't talk. No. Episode. <laughs> yeah, 50th episode. Got that 50th episode coming up. Yeah, we're going to go down to Alabama and do the episode down there. No, I felt like it was a little more of a Baltimore type accent. Like Kathy Bates did in the circus season of American Horror Story. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, that is a nightmare. It was really hard to watch sometimes because mm-hmm. that accent is just so particular. Yeah. Kind of a grating. I'm sorry if anybody's from Baltimore. I, ho- I hope you don't sound like Kathy Bates pretending to be from Baltimore. <laughs> uh, so, mean. today we are doing the 1990 classic Problem Child. Yes. Starring John Ritter and other people i'm not even gonna look because it's been a really long time since i saw this movie but i did watch it quite a bit yeah when i was a little kid i watched it quite a few times yeah but john ritter's the The main yeah was the main person i remember same yeah unfortunately he died way too young yeah quite quite sad he was hilarious go ahead and hiss with some 1999 facts or 1990 facts hi yeah, we're going to go down memory road. This movie was released on July 27th of 1990. It had a budget of $10 million and grossed $72.2 million. So it was moderate success. I did see it has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. It has 29 reviews. That, what? Yeah, mind-boggling. Child Ashley would not agree with that. Oh, Child Ryan would totally disagree. Popular TV shows from 1990 were Murphy Brown, Empty Ness, and America's Funniest Home Videos. Uh, The number one song for the week the movie came out was She Ain't Worth It by Glenn Medeiros and Bobby Brown, which I don't think I know that song. I'm totally going to listen to it after we hit pause. And a couple other of the popular songs were Wilson Phillips, Hold On, and New Kids on the Block, Step by Step. Two of Child Ashley's jams. Oh, yeah. I want to say not Child Ashley. I want to say something better, like Baby Ashley. Does Baby Ashley sound better? Yeah, because you would have been four. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, when we refer to ourselves 
as children, mm -hmm. we should have little nicknames like Little Ash, Little Baby Ash. <laughs> Sweet Little Baby Ash. Yeah. yeah. Was that what you were like some of your earliest song memories are? Wilson Phillips for sure. Yeah. Hold on. I definitely had a thing for New Kids on the Block a couple of years too late. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think. Are there stuff my parents would play? Like, um, what's that something Point Dexter song? Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Buster Point Dexter. Bun yeah. yeah, Buster. I can't talk. Bunter Bust Point Dexter. <laughs> Buster Point Dexter. Yeah. Hot, hot, hot. My dad would play that a lot when I was uh. little. For me, it was the Dirty Dancing soundtrack. Yes. That was what my mom would always play. And I remember riding a lot of places with my aunt, mm -hmm. and we would always listen to Phil Collins' No Jacket Required, and I would always call him Bobby Do. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> That's what I called him. And I would always ask her to play Bobby Do, and she would know that I wanted to hear Phil Collins. So, <laughs> yeah. That's so adorable, but also I want to know why. <laughs> I'm Maybe she knows why. She'll probably comment on this and be like, yeah, he did it this way for some reason. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I'm a weirdo. Um, so back on subject. Yeah. A couple of popular movies. One of these lost the poll two weeks ago. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's definitely going in the loser poll. Yes. Uh, Die Hard 2. Die Harder. <laughs> <laughs> best name ever and kindergarten cop that is another one we need to do yeah apparently 1990 is full of a lot of gems oh god yeah from our childhood definitely because like also back to the future part three came out home alone ghost ghost yeah some good ones look who's talking to my favorite i've yes. said it before and <laughs> honestly going back to this movie problem child I remember the first one, and I remember liking this movie, if we could just move on to yeah, our first impressions. But I do remember really loving the second one, mm -hmm. because he kind of got little sister figure. Yeah. And being a little sister, I thought she was a badass. I mean, she was definitely a bitch, but she was badass. <laughs> it's a badass bitch. Yeah. And the same thing with, like, Look Who's Talking to, mm -hmm. is the little... Getting a little sister. And plus that baby totally looked like me when I was a kid. Oh, the yeah. The baby from Look Who's Talking To. Yeah, I could see that. Like that full head on, like dark hair. Mm-hmm. Cutest baby ever. I'm just saying. You're not biased at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I do not think we saw this in theaters. No. when I was a kid, we, we went to the movies probably a few times a year. Like I remember seeing Hook in theaters and Home Alone. But we weren't going every week. So I would assume we rented it. But I remember watching it multiple times. Because I want to say at some point, this kind of became one of those USA movies. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, where they would play this and Cry Baby yeah. all the damn time. So I watched it a ton. Yes. Going back to how I mentioned John Ritter, I remember watching reruns of Three's Company when mm -hmm. I was a kid. So I probably didn't know a ton of actors. But I knew who John Ritter was. For I didn't sure. know his name, but I knew who he was. Yeah. What I remember from these movies was that his wife, his real life wife, mm -hmm. played his wife in the first movie. Yeah. But she's a bitch. Yeah. And then in the second movie, they just recast her. Which is insane. Yeah. And she's the mother of the, the little girl. Yeah. So. And I remember being really confused when I was a kid, but then also... Like, whatever. Hey, it's a good movie. That's all I care about. Yeah. So, do you think this movie is going to hold up? I'm going to say yes. Okay. I love John Ritter. Like, I can't emphasize that enough. I think he was probably the first celebrity that passed away that I actually kind of was really sad about. Yeah. Because I was watching his show at the time and then, like, knowing how he just, like, abruptly passes away. Right. So I always really liked him, and I think he's going to kind of be the driving force that's going to hold up more than anything. Because I know some of Junior's antics are going to be real cheesy and dumb to me as an adult. Yeah. But it was the same stuff that, as a kid, I loved and thought was hilarious. Right. So I'm, I think it's going to be close, but I'm going, it's going to hold up. 
I don't really have a lot of memories from this movie as far as knowing exactly the plot other than they adopt this kid who ends up being a total nightmare. Yeah. So I'm going to say it's going to hold up to just primarily for the fact that you said because John Ritter is he was good at what he did. Yeah. And I'm hoping that the jokes will be funny and like relatable. Mm hmm. And like you said, it will probably there'll probably be some really cheesy, crazy, unbelievable parts. But yeah. I think overall, it should still be like an enjoyable, funny movie that I remember from childhood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or at so. least fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Because now that I think about it, this has to be one of like my earlier movie memories that was probably a non-Disney movie. Yeah. Like this would be up there. Definitely. So. And like you said, I I remember. Watching it on USA, mm -hmm. this in the sequel, and then the third one. Which, which had no one, right? Yeah. It didn't. I hated when movies would do that. Yeah. Like Home Alone 3. But... Like, I get, like, you don't have Kevin, but I think I would have did okay if they had the same parents. Like, if they would have had Catherine O'Hare and John Hurd in it. But it's when they do those shifts, like, you couldn't at least keep John Ritter around? Right. I think I saw the third one one time. I saw it a couple times. Yeah. I just hate it when they do that. I mean, I get it because kids tend to age faster. Yeah. Especially when they're going through puberty. Mm -hmm. So if they're in that age frame where it's just like all of a sudden they look like mini adults. Yeah. So I, I get that. But I remember when they were having a bunch of rumors about recasting Harry Potter like midway through the, the movies. Yeah, really? because they were worried the age, even though age differences weren't even that bad. No. Like, they're like two years older than what they were supposed to be. Yeah. But I think they were worried about puberty. And honestly, like, I'm looking back, having watched those movies so much, like, there was never an issue. Yeah, no, they aged very gracefully. Daniel Radcliffe still kind of looks like a child sometimes yeah. when he's not, when he doesn't have facial hair. No, but yeah, they lucked out and they picked mainly three kids that didn't have real awkwardness like emma watson really Rupert didn't. granted a little bit a little bit but yeah i know what i looked like when i was going through it and i got chubby and yeah, yeah. but it's relatable yeah too that's true you know? yeah that would have been very weird if they recast those movies halfway through i don't think they would have been as successful yeah there was people that probably would have gone i'm not gonna go see those yeah now and i wouldn't blame them same so we are just about to hit the pausey pause, but we'll go ahead and let you know where you can watch this if mm -hmm. you don't own it, which we actually don't, but it is available on the Stars app if you have Stars or if you have the Stars subscription through Hulu or Amazon. It should also be there. Because we learned last week, we talked about it before we paused, what we asked, do you get different movies if you have it through Hulu or if you have it through Prime? And sure enough, we went and looked, and the movie wasn't available for us. Yeah, I think the website was just wrong, because it just listed stars on Amazon, mm -hmm. and it didn't look... Like, this one on the website actually says stars direct TV also, and then stars on Amazon. Oh, okay. So, it should be available, but I think the last one, maybe that movie was on there at one point, and then maybe they didn't update it on their website. I don't know. It's annoying. It is. But I did check this one the other day. Oh, okay. And so, it is on Stars. So we're sure, for sure going to watch this and not having to pay. Yes. Yes. It's always a good day <laughs> when we can do that. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and hit the... Pausey pause. And come back and talk about Problem Child. And we're back. We just finished watching Problem Child. We're going to go ahead and break down our movie like we always do with our categories. And we're going to kick it off with a little one called Well, Hello There, where we talk about any cameos of famous or recognizable actors or actresses that we forgot were in the movie. And who did you have? I was waiting for you to say, and there was quite a few, but yeah. there wasn't. I always say that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. for the most part, I think we have qu quite a few. Yeah. But I didn't have too many... My first one was Michael Richards, mm -hmm. who plays Martin Beck, or the Bowtie Killer. Yes. And he's, of course, 
Cosmo from Seinfeld. Cosmo? Cosmo Kramer. Cosmo Kramer. I the minute I said Cosmo, I was like, is that his name? Yeah. But yeah, Kramer. He and, really hasn't done much since he left Seinfeld. Well, he had that incident. Yes. Yes, the, yes. The racist incident. Yeah. I feel like Jason Alexander's been in a ton of stuff and I mean somehow I feel like Julia Louis Dreyfus is more famous. I would say she's been working more consistently than Jerry Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. And has done a variety of different things. Yeah. So, yeah, I I, I will agree with that statement that she's surpassed yeah. everybody else in that cast. Definitely. The first one I had was Jack Warden. He played Ben Healy or Big Ben, which uh, John Redder plays Ben. So he's John Redder's father. Yeah. Um, the main thing I know him from was All the President's Men. Yeah, he worked on the yeah. newspaper staff at the okay. Washington Post. Yeah, I was I was looking over his IMVD profile, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was in quite a few movies. Uh, one of his like most notable things was 12 Angry Men, which is a pretty big classic, I would yeah. say. And then what I was trying to figure out where I remember him from, and that makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also he was in While You Were Sleeping... Oh, okay. Sandra Bullock. Okay. And one of his last movies was The Replacements. With Keanu? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm guessing. It was from 2000? Yeah, that sound sounds right. right. Yeah. yeah. That was like one of his last movies before he passed away. Oh, when did he pass away? I think it said actually 2006 maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe 2016. Quite a career then if he was in 12 Angry Men and then working until The Replacements. Yeah. 2006. Okay. And... I had told Ryan this, but because we had said earlier that we weren't sure if anybody was in the third one, which was the TV movie, mm -hmm. and he was, and the next person I'll talk about, Gilbert Gottfried, yeah. was also in the third one, and but nobody else. And for some reason, I thought Judge Reinhold was the dad, and I mm -hmm. think I'm thinking of something else because he wasn't. It was some other guy oh, that okay. I didn't recognize. But Gilbert Gottfried plays Mr. Peabody, which is basically like the social worker, I guess. Yeah. They never really say it, but he kind of assumes that role as a social worker. Yeah, because he's trying to get Junior placed in a home. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously Gilbert, Gilbert Gottfried uh, has been in a ton of things. He was on SNL yeah. in the 80s and voiced a character in one of my favorite movies, Aladdin. He was the voice of Iago. True. What were we watching the other day where he calls somebody Iago and she was like, oh, I didn't know you'd seen, seen Othello. And he was like, I was talking about Aladdin. It was Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freaking amazing. She's like, oh, I'm impressed you. You and know he's like, Shakespeare? No, I'm talking about the parrot from Aladdin. <laughs> uh, uh, that movie's Our show's hilarious. Yeah. Um, we're a little late on the party, guys. We Yeah. And we just started watching it. Well, we started watching it when it first started. Mm -hmm. And then we got behind. Yes. And it was before we had, like, Hulu. Yeah. It and was back... If you got behind and you didn't have it on your DVR, you had to pretty much wait until reruns started airing. Yeah. Or buy it. Yeah. It seems, like, so weird now, but yeah. it's such a thing that we don't have to deal with anymore because... Most TV shows are accessible, or you can at least buy them if you want, you yeah. know, but... No, and you were screwed back in the day, like, if for some reason your DVR turned off and you missed an episode and it's episodic television, you're like, I can't watch. Yeah. I'm not going to know what's happening. And I'm, I'm the type that I need to watch in order. Yes. And I need to watch all of it, especially dramas where there's plot lines over multiple episodes so i don't want to be confused very much so. or i don't want to come in the middle of something yeah no whereas like comedies i think you can get away with just catching one yeah because unless it's the season finale yeah where they're wrapping up storylines like usually a random episode in the middle of a season you're not gonna miss out much yeah um, but anyway back <laughs> to problem child <laughs> The, Did you have anybody else? Yes. Uh, the next person I had was Amy Yazback. Yes. Who, uh, she played Flo Healy, who was John Redder's wife in the movie. Um, she was on Wings when I was a kid. Yes. I like and, that. And uh, we talked about she eventually married 
John Ritter. And I, was his I wonder wife how long they were passed. together. They got they met on the set of this. Oh, I read, and okay. they had a kid in like ninety eight. Yeah, and got married in ninety nine, okay. and then unfortunately he passed away in two thousand three. Yeah, I for some reason I thought they were married a lot longer than they were. Because I assume they had gotten married in the early nineties yeah. around the time of this. Yeah. Right. I, I always liked her, and I liked Wings too. But... Yeah, Wings was a good show. Love me some Stephen Weber. Yes. Yeah. I do want to check out that new show with him and um, Adam Polly and oh. Fran Drescher that... and Abby Elliott. <laughs> I'm I just like naming all, those all people. the people. Yeah. yeah. I uh, love me some Adam Polly. Anyway, we're really getting off topic. <laughs> Let's just talk about TV, guys. Um, Have you guys seen this show called Law and Order? <laughs> I just watched it for the first time. It's amazing. <laughs> what is it? Your parents? Yeah, my parents just got into it like three months ago. <laughs> Good news, Mom. There's 500 episodes yes. you can watch. Yes. You guys have TV for the next decade. And SVU just got picked up for another three seasons. So, Which is insane. Yeah. Um, it's it's gotten so kind of cheesy, but I still find myself watching every single episode. Yeah. Just because Mariska Hargitay. She's, she's amazing. I'm amazed she hasn't left, but I'm thinking she also makes upwards of probably a half million dollars an episode. So well, why really, would you leave? I mean, she really believes in like what they do. Like, yeah. What really the backlog. Cle- yeah. And st- and yeah. Rape kits. She yeah. has the, that foundation mm-hmm. to help end the backlog. So yeah, definitely. Again, tangent into TV. <laughs> Did you have anybody else after that? Cause I don't have. The last one I had, which I don't know how many times I've seen this movie, but I never recognized Carrie Von Erich played an inmate. And Carrie Von Erich was a pro wrestler when I was a little kid. He had a motorcycle accident where they had to cut off part of his leg. So he wrestled for years with a prosthetic foot and nobody knew. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was a really good wrestler. What was his wrestling name? Was it just... He was... Uh, when he wrestled, like, in Texas, he was he wrestled under that name. But when he was in the WWF, he was the Texas Tornado. Oh. But ironically, he killed himself to oh. avoid going to prison. What did he do? I was, I think, prescription drugs. Oh. They have a incredibly tragic family line. Like, mm. I think three of his brothers killed themselves. They were all wrestlers. They were all very good wrestlers he beat rick flair to be the world champion at one point like they were good yeah so yeah it's a real tragedy down there interesting and crazy yeah and yeah i wouldn't have looking at the guy oh (laughs) he did look like a wrestler but you know a lot of people in the late 80s and early 90s everybody got really into bodybuilding yeah do you want to move on yes the next award or (laughs) The next category (laughs) is kids would call it a throwback. We call it the prime of our teens, where we talk about fashion, or in this case, prime of our childhood, tiny baby childhood, (laughs) Um, fashion, offensive jokes, dated references, and then uh, that's it. Again, I want to keep reading (laughs) and read technology. I don't know why. Did you have any fashion you wanted to discuss? I love watching movies from the late 80s and early 90s where people just have massive eyeglasses. Yes. But also, like, I feel like the Wayfair lenses, how they're plastic and kind of big, those are classic. But it's the wireframe with big lenses, which somehow came back. They've been making a comeback, I think. But yeah, I agree with you. When I see really big glasses, I think of late 80s. Mm Mm-hmm. The thing I noticed was in the first scene where Flo and Ben are at the doctor's office basically getting tested to see if they can have kids. Mm -hmm. Flo is wearing this very bedazzled sweater. So many beads and gems on her sweater. And then her hair, just the way it's coiffed up, is very, very 90s. Her outfits just throughout the movie. Yeah. At one point, she was wearing this like leopard print blazer. Yeah. It's just very over the top. She she was over the top. Yeah. As a character, so it fit. But yeah, definitely. Did you have anything else? There was just a scene where it was one of the scenes in the orphanage, mm-hmm. and I think they were gonna yell at Junior for doing something because he was always 
acting like a little shit. And there was just a group of little kids there, and the one kid had such a damn good mullet. It was amazing. Yes. You pointed it out, and I was like, that is a mullet. It's weird because when I was a kid, I didn't have a mullet, so I was kind of oblivious to that being a hairstyle. So it's interesting when we watch these movies, and I'll see it, and I pick up on it, and it's every movie around this time. Somebody has a mullet. Yeah. It was such a popular haircut. I don't know why. I had a mullet, but for the record, I was three years old, and I had no choice in the matter. No, you had no choice. My brother kind of had a mullet at one point, and then he had a rat tail. Ugh. Which was amazing. And my mom kind of had a mullet for a minute. I can't make fun of your brother for having a rat tail because I wanted one. <laughs> I wanted one you so You had rat bad. tail envy? I wanted that and the little, like, pigtail, the little spirally one. Yeah. And my mom wouldn't let me get it. The The barber would tell me, he's like, yeah, you have to have a piece back there and your hair doesn't do it correctly. And I'm like, in hindsight... My mom probably was like, no, that's going to look so stupid. Your mom's sliding the yeah. hairdresser of five. Just tell him you can't do it. <laughs> can't he do doesn't it. have the hair for it. When I was a kid, the people I looked up for, looked up to and wanted to be were pro wrestlers. Yes. So I thought Hulk Hogan's receding hairline was cool as hell. And Sting, he had the spike flap top, which I had. And he had a little pigtail. And I was like, I want that. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. That's amazing. Yep. I don't know if I had anything where I was like, I want that kind of hair. Though when I was really little, I wanted curly hair because I just had thick, straight hair. Mm-hmm. And I wanted it to be curly. And especially in the 90s, like big curly hair, late 80s, early 90s was a, a oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Tease it to Jesus. Yeah. Tease it to Jesus. <laughs> Do you want to move on to offensive jokes and dated references? Yes. Okay. What was your first one? It's just a data reference, and he's timeless, but they were, um, John Ritter and Amy Asbeck are talking about naming their child Henry. Yeah. And they're going back and forth, and he's like, well, we could call him Hank, like Hank Aaron. He's a winner. Like, Hank Aaron's a dated reference, but he's also one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Yeah, I think everybody yeah. would recognize that name. Yeah, it was still dated, though. I didn't really notice... So many dated references as offensive jokes. Yes. Or just offensive things. And a lot of them came from Big Ben. Yes. There was a scene where he literally, I couldn't even write them all down because they were flying out of his mouth (laughs) so quickly in the two minute span he's talking. And I was like, oh my God, I get it. You're an old white guy. Yeah. He was the definition of your cringy grandpa. Yeah, not mine. Well, no, no, no. Anybody's. Yeah, no, not mine either, but <laughs> the definition of a cringy grandpa. The scene I'm talking about, at one point, he says, do you get to bump a real live one? In reference to, he, so he's at their house, <clears throat> his son's house, Ben, and his wife, Flo's, and they're telling him, hey, we had a kid. Yeah. And at first he thinks she's pregnant, and so he's like... You have been getting fatter. And Always then, a nice thing to say to a yeah, woman. Yeah, and then she's like, no, we adopted. Or no, they didn't even say they had adopted yet. He said, or did you get a surrogate? Do you have to just give them your sperm or do you get to bump a live one? Oh, my God. In front of her, his wife and he hit her like, ha huh? ha, huh? huh? that's hilarious. Oh, my God. Did your husband put his penis in another woman to get you guys a baby? I, that- I must have been typing. Because I miss that. That <laughs> Holy I mean, crap. it was so many lines all at once, and then he kept going. But I was typing out this one because I was like, "Whoa!" I did catch at the beginning of the movie when I think it might be the one of the first times we see John Ritter. He's going to meet with him at the sporting goods store that he owns. Yeah, and he tells him, "I'm selling the store to the Japs." Yes, always that age as well. Yeah. I mean, it could have been worse, but still... Yeah. Still not great. No. Not great. No. And then Junior, at one point, uses the R word, which we've discussed multiple times on this podcast, that it's just not something you should say. No. Ever. And it came out of a seven-year-old's mouth. So freely... I noticed also the 
Little League team names were the Braves, which, I mean, they keep trying to get them to change their name, right. as they do with the Cleveland Indians. And the other team's name was the Chieftains. Like, you couldn't get any other baseball name? I was like, like the Yankees real... and Red Sox couldn't? Did they have to pay to use Braves? They might have. I always wonder that, like, in when you're in Little League, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, a, a I'm, lot of teams used um, Major League Baseball team names. Yeah. I'm thinking the logo would be trademarked, but I don't know that you could trademark Braves. I don't know, because when my brother played on a Little League team, my parents were the coaches, and they were the Giants, and it was the same color scheme. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure it was the same logo, but I don't know if it's just like, who's going to hunt down a bunch of little kids and be like, we're going to sue you. When I played in Ohio, they were generic. It was like whoever sponsored the team. That was your name. But out here, we were the Indians and we had t-shirt jerseys that were legit the same font the Indians used. And we had the hat with Chief Wahoo on it. And the other teams in the league were the Yankees, the Red Sox, Dodgers, Diamondbacks. Maybe MLB sponsors it. That's true. I'm sure it's like good publicity for you, you know? Yeah, that's so, true. But yeah, not a good name choice. No. Did you have anything else in, as far as offensive jokes? The only other, and it was more of a dated reference, it's Ben's kind of going crazy and Junior's left with Martin and he comes up to the door and he's going to go into Junior's room and he's just like on a rampage and he just walks up and he's like, here's daddy. <laughs> like oh. it's the shining. Yeah. So it was funny more than anything. That was a, that was a good one yeah. when he starts cracking. <laughs> Do you want to move on? Yes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and unveil our ginormous scoreboard with a 25 foot tall representation of Big Ben on the side of it and talk about some technology. That was... It was amazing. That was amazing and on par with his character, so... Yeah. Made sense. The only one I really noticed that was kind of distracting was when they decide to adopt Junior, Mm -hmm. they go to the orphanage that he's at and Ben has a huge camcorder and he's recording Junior. Yeah. Like as he's coming up to them. And just just that camcorder was very, very large. It was funny because he had that, but he also had a normal camera, camera around his neck, too. That was a good-sized camera, but it just looked nice. He's really so he, enthusiastic. Yeah, he had this massive technology. The, uh, the other one I noticed was it seemed like every time they showed something on TV, for the most part, it was a black-and-white TV. Oh, like when they showed Martin when he's been arrested and he's being led, like doing the perp walk basically yeah. past all the cameras. It's in, on a black and white TV. And I know it's like Junior was watching it in, a, in an orphanage. So they don't have the top of the line technology. Yeah. But I felt like later on in the movie, there was also like another scene where he was watching a black and white TV. And I'm going, well, it's 1990. <laughs> and know. it seems like for the most part, Ben is decently well off. Yeah. So I feel like his dad keeps him not too rich. Yeah, no, definitely. He's definitely at the whim of his father's discretion, but... But then, like, also, he even mentioned his dad hadn't given him a raise in 10 years. and But he lived in, like, a nice suburb. Yeah. Uh, had a nice house. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I didn't really have anything else, but I did want to note that apparently the title song, because... As we've noticed in a lot of movies made around this time, you had to have a title song Mm -hmm. if you're making a movie. It was called Problem Child, and it was by the Beach Boys, and I don't know how I forgot that, because I loved the Beach Boys when I was a kid. I mean, I still love them, but they were my jam. What's amazing is this would have been right around the time they had the resurgence with Kokomo. Yes. So that was probably a good get for them. Yeah. Is getting the Beach Boys to do the theme song. And it's a terrible song. It's not good. <laughs> it was awful. It's probably why I didn't remember it. No. I... Other than in in it, there's kids saying Nana, 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 which Ugh. automatically dates it for me. The one I always think of with like weird sound clips is the song from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Yeah. Where, it's where just... it just keeps going, you're messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. And it's Steve Martin just repeatedly yeah. But that was acceptable in the 80s. Yeah. Was just put that and they kind of do it on heavyweights 
I want to say the heavyweight song. Okay. I could see that. Yeah. Which we've done is an episode of ours if this is your first time listening. It's available in the archives. The archives? Yeah. I don't know. They always deep, say... Deep, deep archives. On um, one of the podcasts, they always, if they ever reference a show they have already done, he's like, available in the archives. Oh. <laughs> but there was some good hard rock on this soundtrack like there was bad to the bone by george thorogood and then born to be wild by steppenwolf which the one i do remember though was it's my party by leslie gore because i remember that montage yes of the birthday party that might have been like the first time i ever heard that song probably yeah probably for me too chew yeah chew me chew (laughs) me chew gesundheit (laughs) uh Did you have anything else to talk about in the technology? Mm Mm-mm. Okay, we can move on to Is It Even Good? We talk about the plot and plot holes. (laughs) And we name our funniest and cringiest moments. Why are you laughing? Because I just like how you emphasize, you're like, plot holes. (laughs) (laughs) Plot holes. There's holes where there are plots. Yeah. What? (laughs) What did you think about the plot overall? I get you could, when you adopt a child, like, there might be behavioral issues. Right. And he obviously has had a crappy go at it in the sense, like, at the beginning of the movie, he just keeps being left on doorsteps, but he's also getting bigger to the point, like, his legs are hanging out of the bassinet. Yeah, it's like the same bassinet. He's like five, and they're carrying him around and just leave him up there. So I could see that part being real like he's a troubled child and they're trying to help him and they're tempted to give up on him yeah you can see that i think yeah if you look at it really vaguely Mm -hmm. excuse me then yeah i'm sure there's a lot of adjustment periods for when you adopt a kid i feel like the way people just like freely gave him away though is kind of shitty yeah and and the way he's being left is just they're leaving him on doorsteps. And yeah. these people aren't calling the authorities. They're just like, ah, we'll leave him there. Yeah, it's it's almost like a plot hole that where are you placing him in this house? And then they're just leaving him. Yeah. Instead of calling the social worker, Mr. Peabody, mm-hmm. and going, yeah, this is not going to work out. If somebody leaves a child on our doorstep tonight, we're not just going to be like, well, I guess he's ours. And also, I guess if we don't want him, we'll just leave him on somebody else's doorstep. <laughs> Tag, you're it. <laughs> Ring yeah. the doorbell and run away. Nowadays, you can't do that. People have ring doorbells. That's true. Yeah. You'd be on camera and people would have figured out who you were in like 10 minutes. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of over the top mm-hmm. the way the movie is presented. But um, what do you think about what were some of the plot holes that you noticed? The one that just stuck out to me was that when junior's in the orphanage they have pen pals and there was kids writing to queen elizabeth and somebody else really famous and he's writing to a murderer yes (laughs) i was a murderino shout out to george and karen at a very young age i was fascinated by them but i was not pen pals with jeffrey dahmer (laughs) right and even if you tried to be somebody Like, your mom or dad or the nuns at the orphanage would go, yeah, I'm not going to send this letter to the penitentiary. Yeah, we're not, we're not mailing this one. Yeah, that's, that was definitely my first plot hole. Yeah. Not so much that he was writing a letter because he did have an interest in his, the bow tie killer's whole thing. He, Mm. that's why he started wearing a bow tie. But, yeah, there's no way So it seemed like didn't know that he was a murderer. He just saw him on TV and was like... He's a good looking guy and he's wearing a bow tie. I can do that and people will like me because look at all these people outside taking pictures of him. I feel like he knew that he was different. And at one point he yells out, I'm just misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Michael Richards. Yeah. Martin. Martin. I think he had identified with that. He's like, yeah, I'm not bad. I'm just misunderstood. Not probably connecting that he, the guy's murdered a bunch of people but that he's just being put down because people don't like the way he does things yeah not like no he's literally murdering people <laughs> but luckily i mean at a seven-year-old you're not thinking about murder but i mean there he does some things that would set him down that path of 
being a serial killer. Yeah, he was a special one. Yeah. I felt like the bowtie killer, Martin, Mm -hmm. escaped very easily from prison. And I'm like, what kind of low security prison did you put this serial killer in? The way he gets out was he was doing like the ink blot test. Yeah, he's talking to his... uh, psychiatrist psychiatrist he like punched the guy in the face and the next thing you know he's driving out in a car yeah and i'm like the warden was just in the room yeah how is there not a guard outside the room and he's famous and recognizable yeah. he's not just going to be able to walk out somebody else is going to be like hey ain't that martin yeah. you know he just put on a coat and a fedora ain't, ain't that martin uh, i like he's <laughs> I, I don't think that's the psychiatrist yeah, yeah. that one was pretty good <laughs> What was your next one? I caught in the movie, like, he, uh, Junior steals money out of the grandpa's wallet when he gets, like, taken to the hospital. But later in the movie, to punish him, Ben's like, you need to give me back your allowance. And he had given him a dollar. Yeah. So he opens up a drawer. There had to have been $500 in that drawer. There was hundreds. And I'm going, where did you get all this money And is there, like, maybe a cut scene where he was swindling people? I just assume he got it in various ways. They're just like, we're not going to show you. We're just going to hope you assume that he's smart enough and he got it in different ways. Maybe maybe he's taking from Ben's wallet, like little Ben's wallet. Yeah. No, I I could see it as a small plot hole. Mm -hmm. Um, At one point, they're camping with the neighbor who is kind of a dick. And... He said dick to little Ben because he's always just like, oh, it sucks you're not a dad. You know, makes him feel shitty. But they're all sitting around a campfire, which is very, very small. But they're sitting so close. And I'm like, you guys are going to catch on fire. Yeah. They were right on top of it. Yeah. And then Junior was nice enough to pee on it. Yeah. As you do. But then the next scene, the fire was lit again, which I thought was, that was like a continuity error. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's like, um, that's a good that was point. weird. Yeah. The one that I thought of, it's not a plot hole, but it didn't make sense. He's at that little brat's birthday party. Yes. And he go, like, they were a-holes to him. And I think he was justified, by the way, for his actions. He was a little, a little over the top, but he was a, they were really mean to him. No, they were. But where were the parents when he just says, chucking every birthday present into the pool and switching out where did he get fireworks to switch out with the candles and nobody's watching him he's a resourceful child (sighs) i'm just kidding no i I agree yeah there there was times where i'm like this is a very busy birthday party and i don't know 90s parents were different maybe they were off getting drunk somewhere in another room whereas now i feel like we have helicopter parents who are like oh oh timmy sneezed T- timmy did you sneeze do you do you need a tissue D- don't don't walk over there don't walk over by Alyssa. she she has a cold yeah like, get away from Braden. yeah that's my favorite dumb kid name from the early 2000s and we apologize now if your kid his name is Braden. <laughs> sorry or Caden or Kaden. any sort of aiden that's well, Not we like we Aiden. like Aiden. Yeah, we yeah, like, like Aiden. Aiden. Yeah, Madison. That's that's one of those. I feel like they use nowadays. It's more popular. Yeah. Sorry. It should be noted. We looked it up one time, and the most popular girl's name from 1986 is Ashley. Yes. And I'm sure Ryan was probably like fourth for 1984. Yeah. So. We're knocking these kids' names, but hey, we, our parents were totally basic and picked names that were pretty common. And both of our our parents came from Catholic families, so mm-hmm. their names were all yeah very just basic Catholic names. It's funny because the name of my mom, you have an aunt with that name. Yes. The name of my aunt, you have an aunt named that. Like I'm pretty sure there were six names that you could choose from if you're Catholic. and. Yeah. No, your your family. Those are like 1950s Catholic names at 101. Yeah. <laughs> right there. For sure. I think the only, I, the last plot hole I really want to talk about was, so at the end of the movie, Marty comes to find his pen pal and realizes it's a seven-year-old. Mm-hmm. And he has sex with Flo. Mm-hmm. 
and they run away together technically, but he kidnaps her and Junior and tries to get a ransom from Ben. Mm -hmm. And he puts Flo in a suitcase Mm -hmm. at one point because she's bitching. And go figure, she's bitching that she's being kidnapped. How dare she? So she's in the suitcase for who knows how long. It's during the whole time that he's meeting up with Ben to get the ransom money. Mm -hmm. And she's in the trunk. And then at the end of the movie, she flies out of the trunk, still in the suitcase, over a bridge into a truck. And I'm like, that woman would be dead. (laughs) I'm sorry. She didn't even, like, say ow. I don't think when she landed, she was just like... I mean, she landed in hay, but I still think some of the impact would not be fun. Yeah, and she was like, what's that smell? And she probably would have suffocated by then. Yeah, that would be the thing, I would assume. I don't know. There's a lot of questionable things that happen in this movie, but that was... That one got me. Did you have anything else? No, that was it. What was your funniest line or moment? There was some good chuckles in this movie for me, and even some of the cheesy stuff that Junior would do kind of made me laugh. But I like when uh, Flo and Ben have reached their end, and they are like, we have to get rid of Junior. Yeah. So he takes Junior to a church because he wants to talk to the priest and have a confession and talk about this. And early in the movie... Ben's at the sporting goods store, and he this kid asks him, do you guys sell canteens? And he takes them over, and he shows them where the canteens are. But when they go to the church, that boy is an altar boy at the yeah. church. And he's like, hey, do you remember me? And he tells him that story. And Ben just was like, blow it out your ass, kid. <laughs> yeah, because it's like in that first scene where he's talking about the story, he's really nice. And mm-hmm. it's like showing how much he wants a son. And he's like, oh, this kid's so nice, and I, I want a ki- I want a son like this. And then it was funny when the kid was like, hi, mister, do you remember me? And he's all being all nice, and he's like, blow it out your ass. That was also my funniest moment, because it's just like the minute... I mean, in this scene, it wasn't really appropriate, but he started to stick up for himself a little, and yeah. he just got funnier. And it also, it's the, one of those things you have to see, because... John Ritter looks like a crazy person when he's walking through there. And I don't know why this kid's like, oh, hey, you remember me, sir? I'm like, read the room, kid. Yeah. He is not happy. Yeah. Read the room. Uh, He just progressively gets worse, too. Oh, yeah. But I did have another one, so since we kind of had the same one. So when they're back at Mr. Peabody's office Mm -hmm. and they're trying to basically return Junior and... They're yelling, and Flo is like, so now I'm a bad parent because I hate my kid? <laughs> and it's just really funny the way she said it. Uh, it made me chuckle. Uh, what was your cringiest? I'll just narrow it down to this part, but we'll. I'm going to talk about it a, little, a little later. It was that birthday party, and when this group of girls surrounds Junior, and they're like, you're not even a real kid, you're adopted. I was Gross. Like, yeah. That's what they say. They are so bitchy. Yeah. I've never seen five-year-olds be that mean. Yeah. Or six-year-olds. They are they are young. They're, yeah, they're younger, because I want to say she said it's her sixth birthday or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I actually also had that, but, I mean, I had the birthday party, but mm-hmm. the part that I hated was during the montage where they're singing or where they're playing It's My Party. Mm -hmm. He's doing all these bad things and they keep cutting away to the little girl Lucy. Oh my God. And her cry faces. And you could tell they just had her do like 10 different tantrums Mm -hmm. in the same exact spot. And I'm like, did she just not move her whole birthday? And she's just sitting there crying and she is crying even though he did something in upstairs. Yeah. He no, puts, she just stood there Like, she flailing. knows. Yeah. Ugh. She she knows. Is she psychic that he's... I, 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 don't, I don't get it. It was just the cutaways were really cheesy and bad, and her acting was horrible, so... Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to talk about anything else? I would like to point out, why on earth would they do a bedroom for a child in clowns? <laughs> I don't know if it was meant to be, like, these people have no clue what it's like to be a child, or they're also psychopaths, and they're like, this, what is the one thing kids hate? Clowns. Clowns. Yeah. 
I that was, room is terrifying. I was thinking about when I was a little kid and I would spend the night at my aunt's house. She had two twin beds for us to sleep in. Mm-hmm. It was just a normal room, but she had this little clown statue, which was cute in hindsight. I was horrified of it as a child, and I would make her take it out of the room. No, I don't blame you. My only clown story was my mom's friend uh, that she worked with gave me some clothes Mm -hmm. because she was a very small person. I was like 10, so Mm -hmm. we were the same size. And she had some hand-me-downs, so she gave me some of her clothes. And she also gave me this clown. Mm -hmm. It had a porcelain face, and it was a wind-up thing, Mm -hmm. and it would move its head back and forth. Oh, God. Creepily. Well, I liked it for a second, and Mm -hmm. then it freaked me out, so I put it in my closet. Years later, maybe not years later, maybe a year later, Mm -hmm. I am sleeping in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden, I hear the music. Did you burn down your closet? (laughs) The next morning, I dug out the toy, mm-hmm. and I was I gave it to mom. I was like, I don't want this. I'm donating it. I'm getting rid of it. It's haunted. I would have accidentally dropped it and had it shatter into a thousand pieces. I was a nice kid, and I felt like if I threw it away, that it would somehow get back to that lady mm-hmm. that I threw away a gift. I don't know. What's weird is, I'll say this, I was afraid of clowns. But I was not afraid of Ronald McDonald, who no. was a clown. I mean, he's kind of creepy. And if I saw, like, a clown at a birthday party, I wouldn't run away from him. But I was very creeped out by them. Yeah. Yeah. By, like, toys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think I was more creeped out by the human element of actual clowns. But yeah. I get it. Just right off the bat, the voiceover... Totally forgot that there was a lot of voiceover action. or mm-hmm. So you kind of hear what Junior's thinking. And at the beginning of the movie, I'm like, why are you yelling, Junior? Why are you yelling? <laughs> I wonder if there was a lot of kid actors in that time period where they're like, and action. And they're like, oh, action means scream my line. <laughs> yes. As we <laughs> noticed, and when we were watching a reef, Rift Tracks, Reef Tracks, Rift Tracks of Firehead, mm-hmm. which is a... Excellent movie. Everybody should watch it. But there's a little girl in there, and she literally is yelling all of her lines for it's, no reason. It's a nice day, sir. Like, why are you yelling? Yeah. He's right next to you. Oh, she has cotton balls in her ears. Okay, oh. it's understandable. And that's how I felt with this with Junior in the beginning of the movie. He he was like yelling his lines. Yeah. No. I'm like acting. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Just the last thing I had was when they play the Little League game and Junior comes in to bat because they need a pinch hitter. The other team is being really mean. Yes. And they're chanting son of a dork at him. So, so mean. I'm totally going to use that next time (laughs) as an insult. (laughs) Go play in a rec league softball game and just start chanting that at like a (laughs) 40-year-old. Son of a dork. So I thought that was incredibly rude, and I don't think that would fly. I think, like, your coach would be like, what are you doing? You guys are not chanting that? Yeah. But then he gets a hit, and Ben did tell him, whatever you do, don't go let go of the bat. Because on the previous pitch, he let go of the bat, and it shattered a car windshield. Yes. And he runs the bases committing aggravated assault. assault. That they didn't show, because maybe it's not great to show a kid beating somebody else with a baseball bat they did show him slide into home plate and smack the kid in the testicles with a baseball bat they did show that but the other ones it was implied that he was like beating the crap out of some of those kids with baseball the baseball bat you would hear the noise and they would just show like a mitt and fly into the air and i'm going that kid should be arrested and held without bail (laughs) you think and that was like the starting point of John Ritter cracking, too. (laughs) Like, going, okay, I can't save this kid. No. That was pretty, pretty funny. Honestly, I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Same. So we're going to go ahead and move on to award season. We give out two awards every week. The first of which is a valedictorian to the Nicolas Cage Online School of Bad Acting. Who did you give your award to? 
I think we're going to have the same one because I gave it to an actress named Colby Klein. As did I. Who played Lucy, that little biatch. Yes. Who called the first meeting they have, she calls him gross because he's adopted. Yes. And her mom seems perfectly nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, where do you get this bitchy attitude, little girl? Oh, she had the most go to hell attitude of a five year old yeah. ever. And. She wasn't convincing her line. She, if you thought Junior yelled his lines, she also, <laughs> I yelled her lines. She was like, "Hold my milk, Junior." Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna scream. And mine. honestly, I chose it purely on that montage of him ruining the party. Same, because her hissy fits were so bad. Ugh. I think they had to put music over it because they're like, the tone of her cries are probably not convincing. It was like nails <laughs> on a chalkboard. I honestly don't know that I've ever wanted to go punch a child so much as this little girl. Yeah. She was the fucking worst. She was. She yeah. was the worst. And, I mean, just to be have clarity, I was going to give it to Michael Oliver, who played Junior. Mm-hmm. For the first 20 minutes of the movie because before they introduced Lucy. Yeah. Because there were parts that I felt were really cheesy or he just was really stiff. And mm -hmm. I get it. Child actors weren't... There was, there was a time we've talked about it where they just like got bare minimum, I feel like, with child actors. And now we have ones that are almost unbelievably good Yeah, at acting at such a young age. It's just funny because, like, there was great actors. Like, we've talked yeah. about Corey Feldman, as weird as he is nowadays. Go watch him in the 80s. He was a very, very good actor for a child. Macaulay Culkin was a good actor. I did read he allegedly auditioned for this movie, and I would wonder what the hell your casting director was thinking. They wanted somebody that, that was, like, a red-headed... Little devil child? That that can only be it, because they said Macaulay Culkin was unknown at this time, too. So you went with him? But I will say, the further into the movie, I feel like maybe he got more comfortable or something. And mm -hmm. I thought some of his lines, they were entertaining, they were funny, and he, he did fine. Yeah. So that's why I give it to this girl, because I think overall, he was watchable. Yeah. It wasn't like I was like, I want to stab this kid. No. No, he's got his moments, especially like... He does well at delivering a lot of the humor. Yes. But, yeah, no, she is overacting beyond belief. And there was a, the scene where he is in the confessional mm -hmm. with John Ritter. John Ritter thinks he's talking to the priest, but Junior is on the other side. And then he leaves, and he's like, don't get rid of me. And he actually had, like, tears down his eyes. I don't know if they were real, but they looked convincing, and he had a little pouty face. It was really cute. Yeah. So that was, like, convincing. Mm -hmm. But we can move on if you want to. Yes. The next award is the Thomas J. Hanks Award for Exceptional Acting. Who did you give yours to? I gave it to one of my early childhood favorites, John Ritter. He's, like, all-American dad for the first 40 minutes of the movie. And then when he cracks, he cracks amazingly. <laughs> but... Uh, the thing, like, it was some of just, like, the easy touches that the director would do was he wants to be such a good dad. He's always reading these parenting books, like, just subtly. They don't really emphasize it, but he's like, be it's a book called Be a Good Dad. Yeah. And then when he cracks, he's reading The Exorcist. The Exorcist, yeah. <laughs> so it was good, and he is far and away the best part of this movie. I agree. I think... There were a lot of over-the-top performances mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be the zany family comedy. I question whether this is truly a kid's movie, but we can discuss that in a minute. <laughs> I also gave mine to John Ritter, and I felt like the first 30 minutes or so, he was kind of this pushover. He had a shitty dad. His wife was kind of shitty, and he just wants to be a dad. Yeah. And then when he cracks... He also starts sticking up for himself, though. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's like Junior brought out the side of him that where he needs to be strong and he needs to stand up for himself. So he, he screws his dad's campaign. Yeah. I felt like it wasn't justified that he just left his wife, though, because she was shitty and she did cheat on him. Mm -hmm. But he did, technically didn't know that, though they were doing it in the kitchen 
in the next room where he was, and he was already cracked. Yeah. So he wasn't even, like, all there. But I, uh, I thought he was good overall, and especially in those last few scenes where he was funny, stronger. And he has a nice arc. Like you said, like, he wants to be a dad. Junior's a shithead. He blames himself and tries to figure out what he's doing wrong and how he can help him. He reaches his breaking point, goes crazy, and then, you know, comes back around and is like, no, I love this kid and I'm not going to give up on him. So yeah. he has, like, this really nice arc. Yeah. And a kind of a weird movie for sure i agree do you want to move on yes we shall so yeah what do you think so i just wanted to pose the question of and i had to look it up okay i wanted to know the rating of this movie and who it was geared towards because obviously we saw it as a young age and it is pg which is insane yes completely insane and it also says it's a family movie but if you break it down in the sense that there's a serial killer, mm -hmm. which, I mean, I guess there's a serial killer technically in Adam's family, the second one, but it's a woman, so it's okay. <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. <laughs> serial killer. Mm -hmm. There's sex. They mm -hmm. don't show it a lot, but there's, it's still there. There's, at one point when he's snapped, he does contemplate suffocating Junior. Yes. With a pillow. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, there's so much going on in this movie that I don't know how it got a PG rating. If it was made today... It's got to be PG-13. At least. Yeah. And there was, like, some cussing in it. Mm -hmm. He tells a kid to blow it out his ass. Yeah, that's true. That happens. As far as uh, the movie holding up, mm -hmm. I don't think it does. Okay. I disagree. Okay. I think it's close. I do think there's a lot of cheesy cringe and like we talked about a lot of the acting is very over the top yeah but i thought there was enough funny parts that it kind of balanced it i would say right like i don't think it's by any means you know whatever mm. you would call the greatest comedy of all time but i agree with you i don't know how this was really acceptable viewership for us as children right and i remember watching it a lot yes exactly not to say that I wouldn't, like, let a kid watch this, mm -hmm. but it's just, to me, I think we water down, down things so much for kids sometimes now. Yeah. On certain themes. Mm -hmm. And violence and writing to a serial killer, I, that wouldn't fly. No. Yeah. There's just so many things in this movie that would not fly. I did enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I did think it was an enjoyable watch. It was a nostalgic watch because yeah. I hadn't seen it in such a long time. But yeah, I just don't think it held up because it was too over the top. It was too cheesy and it seemed way too dated overall. It was almost a little distracting. Yeah, but, I didn't see that. Like I said, it was close for me. Yeah. But I, I thought there was enough there that I I kept it on the good side of things. Good for you, Ryan. Good for you. I'm mm -hmm. just kidding. Uh, so that's it, guys. Uh, oh, uh, what were you going to say? Well, we could ask people if they have questions. We're going to be doing our Q&A episode in two weeks. Okay, go ahead and ask them. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions you guys want to ask us, anything, yeah, go ahead. It In celebration mm -hmm. of our 50th episode. <laughs> episode. <laughs> episode. <laughs> episode. <laughs> and our one year anniversary we were going to have a couple of drinks. And yes. If you're listening to this now, you're going, Ashley, it seems like you already had a couple. <laughs> I have not. No. Yet. But we are going to have a couple of drinks, do a little bit of a late night recording yeah. to answer some questions, Q&A, and just have a good conversation mm -hmm. with one another. Yeah. And then maybe when you guys listen to it, don't listen to it on the drive to work. Go home. Have a nice couple drinks while you listen to the yeah. podcast. Open up a nice bottle of, I don't know, I'm trying to Cavassier. think of... Cavassier. Daniel could some... have a glass of Lagavulin whiskey. Or some Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> oh, God. Some Boom some, Farm. Some Steel Reserve. Yeah, some Everclear. I'm just naming horrible things that I put Hypnotic in my body. Hypnotic? Pucker? I just said horrible things I put in my body and you didn't say anything. <laughs> Hi-oh! <laughs>
Oh, God. Oh, God. Anyway, this is a train wreck. I'm just <laughs> kidding. So thank you so much for listening. And if we didn't make it clear, you can send any questions for our anniversary slash 50th episode. Just DM us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or emails at ruiningourchildhood at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And Over on Instagram, we're at Ruining Our Childhood. Yes, if you're not already on our Instagram. Mm-hmm. Facebook, we're at Ruining Our Childhood. And over on Twitter at ROC Movie Podcast. That is correct. And thank you so much for listening to another episode of Ruining Our Childhood. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.